Hey everyone, welcome to a special Thanksgiving edition of In The Zone. I am here with Isaac Rochelle, defensive end for the Los Angeles Chargers. And we're gonna talk a lot about not only Thanksgiving, but also his YouTube channel, his podcast. We have a lot of really exciting things to get down to. So first of all, thank you so much, Isaac. It is awesome to have you here. Yeah, I'm super fired up to be on this. So thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And I understand, well, first of all, let's just get right down to it because Thanksgiving is a few days away. And by the time this video comes out, Thanksgiving may have already passed. But yeah. I do want to talk about this special dinner event that you have in terms of giving out over 400 free meals. Um, this sure. sounds really, really fantastic. And given the year that we've all had, I think doing this is just even more important than ever. So I and our audience would love to hear about this event and what you guys plan to do for Thanksgiving. Yeah, so one, I think you're totally right. What better time to be supporting families than now after the pandemic and everything going on? But I co-founded a company called Local Human and Local Human is a com it's an apparel company, um, but we donate all the proceeds to our foundation and that foundation fuels a lot of initiatives like this Thanksgiving drive. So. For this Thanksgiving drive, we've partnered with one of my teammates, Trey Turner, and we are going to feed 450 families and not just like a turkey. We're doing like the whole, you know, start to finish Thanksgiving meal. Um, and we're just supporting low income families here in Santa Ana. You mentioned it. And I think it's, it's really important to talk about these families are struggling because of this pandemic and, and not just them, but everybody. Um, so it's just like, super cool, super rewarding for our company to be able to do this. And like I said, 450 families, it's going to be a really cool event. Yeah, it, it just sounds so amazing. And it's so nice that you can be able to give back to the community, especially community that's really, really struggling. How is this going to roll out? I mean, I understand that it's going to be a drive through event, but what is the actual yeah. protocol keeping everything in line with COVID still happening? How do you guys exactly plan to disperse these meals? Yeah, it's a good question. So everything is non-contact. Um, basically, the families are going to uh, drive up, open up their trunks. We're going to put the food in the trunks um, and then they're going to go home. So it's going to be pretty simple. Um, it's it's a drive through. So like I said, it's all just drive through, get your food and leave. Um, and we want to be really, really aware of COVID. I mean, COVID is real. Um, people are affected by it. And we certainly don't want to, um, you know, contribute to the spread of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so we're being really cognizant of, of COVID and its effects. Sure, sure. And speaking of being cognizant of the effects of COVID, just in terms of sports in general, as you obviously know, being a part of the NFL and having to deal with this global health pandemic, it's been really difficult for everyone involved. Yeah. Well, I'm really curious to know how you yourself have tackled, you know, just keeping safe, keeping healthy, and still trying to be an optimal football player and being able to be able to be mentally and physically still in the game. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways we have to rely on our on our peers, which include our coaches and teammates. Um, to keep everything kind of going the way it needs to. And that's been kind of the thing for me that I've leaned on a lot. Um, and then past that, it's just leaning on my routine, you know, keeping the same routine I would keep outside of a pandemic um, as far as like my day-to-day -day in the facility and whatnot. Um, and then obviously when I get home, I'm not hanging out, doing a bunch of things. I'm kind of laying low, um, but it's been pretty smooth up to this point. I think the thing that affects it more than anything is what's going on outside of football um, I think the teams and the league has done a great job of keeping COVID not a huge issue. Um, but again, you can only do so much when, you know, 250,000 people have died and it's spreading faster than ever. Um, so I guess to answer your question, I just lean on my routine and my teammates. Mm -hmm. And has your diet changed at all in terms of trying to keep healthier? Have you found yourself implementing an even more stricter diet? I mean, I understand that you went plant-based a few years ago. I don't know if you're still on that level or if you've completely changed that. Yeah, I so I did do plant-based for about, it was probably like seven months. Um, I've gotten away from that. Um, but, you know, for me, it's all about growth and uh, understanding where I'm at in different times. So my diet changes a lot. I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever, but for me, it's kind of like, what do I think is best for me right now? Do I need to lose weight? Do I need to gain weight? Do I need to change my body composition? So it's, it's a hard question to answer because I feel like my diet's so dynamic. 
Yeah, yeah. And what do you guys plan on doing for Thanksgiving? Are you keeping it? I don't know how it is in California. I know here on the East Coast, there's a lot of different restrictions going on. So I don't know oh. if you guys are just staying home, you and your partner, Allie, or if you're just kind of thinking, maybe we won't visit the family. Maybe we'll just keep it low key or. Yeah, we're not doing anything. I mean, it just is what it is. It's kind of like, you know, it's unfortunate, but like I mentioned earlier in this conversation, I mean, 250,000 people have died. So we don't, one, we don't want to get COVID. We don't want to contribute to the spread of COVID. We kind of want to just do our thing and, and be really like considerate of what's going on. Sure, sure. And, you know, I have to bring up your partner again, Ali. I've been watching some of your guys' videos and you're doing a podcast. It seems like you both are really getting in tune with social media and really trying to make a name for yourselves on this platform, which a lot of people are doing, but you guys are succeeding. So I'm very curious to know how that process has been just being, you know, going from being an NFL player to navigating this world of YouTube. What are your tricks? What are your secrets or what, what has been your game plan in order to build your channel? Yeah. So it's a good question for me. It is, uh, it is kind of just following what she does. I mean, she does such a good job. I should grab her. She's right here. But <laughs> she's like, she's she's really in tune with how social media works. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been super critical of social media for a long time because I think there's pros and cons to it. But I think if you really attack the pros, it can be such a cool tool to build branding. Um, and like you're saying, make a name for yourself. I mean, she's, I've learned so much from her. Like you mentioned the, the podcast, she's got the, the lifestyle, like daily vlogs. I mean, she's introduced me to TikTok, all these different things. And it's like, it's really, really beneficial. So I'm thankful that she's such a visionary in that like social media world. Because mm-hmm. uh, it helps me brand myself. Yeah. And speaking of TikTok, how has that been navigating? Did you find that it was just completely yes. out of your depth? Or- <laughs> TikTok is crazy. I don't <laughs> so like I started I started like seriously posting on TikTok probably a month ago and since then it's just grown super fast. And um again it's just it's her. She's just she's been more steady on it and uh you know I'm just like this is another platform to mm-hmm. to grow my brand on for people to have more name recognition cuz they see me on there and then they see me on the field and it's just it kind of completes the picture. You know I think there's going to be more NFL guys to kind of get on these platforms. Uh, I mean, why not? It's like, I I tell, I tell my teammates, um, you know, high school football players are on it. College football players are on it. So if you plan on being in the league in five years, like you're going to be behind the ball if you don't get on these platforms and start to make a name for yourself. So it's just an interesting platform. It's been fun to grow though. Mm -hmm. And I'm super happy that you brought up high school and college football players, because one question I really wanted to ask you is just with everything happening with this pandemic and the amount of high school, particularly high school students who had dreams of playing college football or taking it to the next level and potentially seeing those dreams a little bit squashed because they may not be able to play a full season what would be your advice for those kids dealing with that? Because that's a lot to deal with in tandem with schoolwork and just being able to keep all of those things afloat and not being able to do the normal things that they hope to do in their school year. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is there's no right answer, right? And even if I gave a right answer, it doesn't make it easier as you're going through it. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest advice that I would give though is just to stay the course, I mean, there's things you can control and you can't control. And what you can control is what we talked about earlier in this call. You know, how, how is your routine? How is your eating? How are your habits? You know, what has changed since the pandemic started that might be negatively affecting you? Those are all things that these uh, student athletes can be thinking about that will help them, um, one, get to the next step and two, alleviate some of the stress. But, you know, there's no right answer. Sure, sure. And thank you for that. And to give it a more of a lighter tone, what is your favorite, because this is a special Thanksgiving episode we're having, what's your favorite Thanksgiving meal? What did you always grow up just wanting? The only thing, if there was one thing you could have at the Thanksgiving table and that was it, what would it be? People always ask that. I have no, (laughs) I was like, when I, when I pull up to a Thanksgiving dinner, I'm trying everything. There's not (laughs) a a dish that I don't try. Mm. So 
I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I want a complete Thanksgiving meal. So I guess everything. I mean, I want my plate to be well-rounded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not just going to load up on one thing. If it's me, I would say stuffing, but that's just me. I'm a stuffing and cranberry type girl, but yeah, I feel yeah. you. You're, you're still growing. So you gotta, you're like, I gotta I'm say on everything. Yeah. <laughs> And in light of everything still going on, do you guys have your Christmas plans? Like, are you planning out things that far in advance or are you kind of just taking it a day at a time? I think we're like everybody else. I mean, you know, what what is America doing? We're all just taking this thing a day at a time. So mm-hmm. I think we're kind of following suit. You know, we'll see what this thing looks like in four weeks. Who, mm-hmm. who knows? I mean, you think back to the beginning of the pandemic as it started to build up. Mm-hmm. four weeks made a big difference in what the what the world looks like so we'll see exactly and you know they're talking about this vaccine or a number of vaccines and antibodies and, and all these things happening at such a rapid pace now that we didn't anticipate should a vaccine come as early as say the first week of December has your coach have you guys talked about the possibility of, of how that would change the NFL climate and the climate for your team? No, we haven't. I think that would be a conversation that would be between the NFL PA and the NFL Mm -hmm. uh, just offices. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, we're, we're trying to win games. It's like, we, we don't even hardly talk about COVID. What we talk about as it pertains to COVID is how we can be safe in our facility and how we can keep the season going. Mm -hmm. But past that, there's not much conversation about it. Yeah, yeah. So what are your your hopes for next year? Because it's right around the corner, 2021, the Super Bowl. You know, it's I feel like next year is just going to come all sp- full speed ahead. So what are your personal hopes and dreams, things that you want to accomplish for the new year? Yeah, so I haven't totally thought about it. I think the first goal is just going to be figure out what team I'm going to be on. Mm. Uh, I'm entering free agency. I'm a restricted free agent. So, you know, I could be with the Chargers. I could be with someone else. I think that's step one. Um, And then I think past that, it's just continue to develop the things I've got going on off the field. You know, with more time comes a lot of development off the field uh, with the offseason. So it's just going to kind of be those two things. But I'll be in limbo there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And I also wanted to touch on local human. You mentioned, you know, that apparel line. And I really want to get into that as well. In terms of how did you found this apparel line? When did this idea come to you and your co-founder? And where do you hope to take that apparel line into next year as well? Yeah, so I mean, the co-founder, his name's Trevor Beck. Mm-hmm. And so Trevor and I, uh, we both have dogs in our apartment complex. So we spent like tons of time when the pandemic started at the dog park. And we would sit around and just kind of like, just observe what's going on, right? And observe like the affected demographic and observe just everything. Mm -hmm. And we came to the point where we were like, we need to do something to be able to give back. And so that's when we started Local Human. We started selling shirts. Our first shirt that we sold, um, we sold 500 and we were able to donate 1500 meals to Meals on Wheels to support the elderly population because the elderly population was getting tore up by COVID. And that just continued to develop. And now we're here and we've donated over $50,000 and it's been six months. So it's been a crazy fast growth for our company. Um, And we just want to continue to grow. I mean, I look at companies like Tom's um, and I'm like, man, I'd love to be like Tom's. I mean, that's obviously big picture, but for what we're doing. I mean, we donate every single dollar back to people. Um, So, you know, hopefully it just continues to grow. I hope people fall in love with just doing good for others. Um, And that'll be the best thing for our company. Oh, for sure. For sure. And what you guys are doing is phenomenal. I mean, I've seen videos, you're just giving out hundred dollar bills to folks and (laughs) it's, you know, you don't see that. You just don't see that normally. So it's, yeah. Well, I was going to say we try to take, there's two approaches to it. Mm-hmm. One, we take the more structured giving approach, which is we're going to feed 450 families for Thanksgiving. Um, we're going to send two kids to whatever college to visit whatever college they want to visit in the country. We're going to fill in the blank. And then the other approach is, you know, like it's fun to be obnoxious and be like whatever and just give people money. I mean, it makes people's day. And another thing we've done is, we've given people money to give to people like, Hey, here, you take this hundred dollars and go bless somebody else. Like 
the chain reaction of giving. So we've done so many cool things. And, you know, my biggest thing is I wouldn't have been able to do it if I wouldn't have partnered with Trevor. I mean, the two of us have just been full steam ahead with this. So it's been really fun. Sure, sure. And my last question for you, Isaac, on that note is what has been the biggest thing that you've learned from this year with everything that's happened? It's almost Thanksgiving. It'll be Christmas and soon New Year's Day. What's the one biggest thing that you've learned that you'll take away into the next year? Yeah, I mean, that's an unbelievable question. So I I feel like for me, it's been, um, I, I feel like I've learned a lot this year. I think it's been probably one of the most challenging years for humans, at least since I've been alive. But I think what it's done is it's given people a lot of time to self-evaluate. You know, what are your goals? Where do you want to be? What's holding you back? And I feel like I've had the opportunity to do that. And what it's caused me to do is roll out some of these, some of these things like local human. I mean, I think if I finish my football career, however long that is, and I'm still doing local human, like I, I am super thankful for 2020, right? Like that is life changing. Mm -hmm. And just in a lot of different ways, you know, I got engaged this year, like a lot of things happened this year. So um, I'm like very thankful for 2020 in a lot of different ways. And so my takeaway is going to be like, man, like 2020 was crazy, good and bad. So it's been a cool year. I'm excited for next year. But, you know, this has been weird. 2020 is weird. <laughs> I mean, the understatement. It's been weird. It's been amazing. It's been... It's I been would, crazy. Yeah, revolutionary in just so many ways. But I really appreciate your time, Isaac. I mean, you're a busy man. I appreciate you being able to sit down with me. I'm honored to talk with you. Unfortunately, yeah. I wish it was in person, but there will be right. a time. I always think, you know, things happen for a reason and I'm sure we'll cross paths again. So I absolutely 100% appreciate your time. No doubt. Thank you. You have great energy. So I appreciate the interview and and good luck with everything. Thank you, thank you. And to just cap everything off, you know, if you don't mind telling our viewers, our listeners, and our readers just where they can find you, you know, all your social media, your YouTube, your podcast, and also talk about the Thanksgiving Turkey Drive, how they can get information on that, and Local Human as well. Yeah, so let's start with Local Human. So localhuman.co, C-O. On that website, you can find everything, our, our December initiatives, you can find ways to donate on there. Um, you can donate to our foundation, the Do Good Foundation. That's all on the website. Another thing you can do, which is the easiest thing, is just buy a T-shirt because we're donating all the proceeds back to our foundation anyways. Um, where you can find me, just Isaac Rochelle on all platforms. You can type it in and I'll pop up. Um, and, and then if you want to follow the YouTube, I would go to my girlfriend's YouTube, or not girlfriend, fiance. I'm learning. <laughs> fiance's youtube because uh she she captures way better content than i do uh, and that's allison k k a y so yeah check us out perfect perfect thank you again isaac thank you guys for tuning in as promised we always have great 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 interviews for you at in the zone and after thanksgiving we'll have even more so stay tuned check out the website youtube and our social media and we'll see you next time all right see you